David Arquette is one of the coolest people I've ever interviewed, and he did a fireside exclusive interview for Chance TV about his new movie, Scream 2022. What is it about acting that drew you to that at a young age? Because you've been in so many things. I mean, you were in Bucky, you were, yeah. you know. Well, my family had always been in it, sort of something in our heritage. We're fourth generation, so it's something that, that, yeah, so it's something that we just grew up. I was talking to my brother the other day, we were just talking about, you know, life. And I was saying, we're, we're just, we react, to, like, you know, that's sort of what we go to. But that's also our job. It's all what we've been raised to learn. And just being in the moment and, and having, you know, these swells of emotions. So it's something you have to learn how to love, I guess. Well, like you said, it's, it's kind of genetically there and also environmentally. You, you saw it from day one. Yeah. The type of movies that you have done in the past. Did you ever go home and get scared, have a really <laughs> bad nightmare? Because I always thought and I always asked. Yeah. Not really. I mean, when you're on the sets, they don't really seem that scary. But uh, yeah, I mean, I love I love doing scary movies. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, so, I think they're probably the most fun. Yeah, they really are. Especially working with someone like Wes Craven, you really like learn so much from. First film I directed was called The Tripper, and it was a horror film. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't know. Everybody's fired. I didn't know about the Tripper. Okay. What was it like being behind the camera, given you're in the front of the camera? So yeah. Much? You have to answer a lot of questions. You have to have the answer to a lot of questions. You can. You shouldn't say you don't know. You say, "Give me a second. <laughs> I'll never come back." Yeah. No. But um. Yeah. It's. Well, my favorite part about directing is you really learn what everybody's role is on the crew. When the movie came out, were you able to sit and enjoy it, or were you a critical, oh, I could have done this, but, you know, turning into Clint Eastwood, like, that was wrong. This well, was it was a little independent movie, so Still. you always wish you could have, okay. like, other things back, or extra shots, or this or that. And by the time it finally comes out, you probably watched it. 3,000 times at least, you know. And then you're like, all right, we're I'm done. ready for the, yeah. Right. No trip or two, sorry, yeah. rip that contract. Well, there was a good idea for it, but no, it did I think it made 35,000 at the box office. For indie films, that's pretty good. Yeah, it was uh, It was about a, a killer that was obsessed with Ronald Reagan, and he attacked hippies at an outdoor music festival. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a lot of drugs and violence. It was fun. Right off the bat with obsession with Ronald Reagan and killing hippies. I mean, yeah. who hasn't felt that way? Always want to own my own club and finally and being able to. Yeah, pictures all over the wall. Yeah, it's made that to my mother. Great homage to your mom, like <laughs> true love. I know. We just opened one at the SoFi Stadium for all the Rams games. So it's a, it was a pretty exciting thing, and I went there right at my 50th birthday, and I was just like, thanks, mom. If you're an actor in Hollywood, you really have to diversify what you're doing so that you're not just always waiting for the phone to ring. So I just had this love for it. My father loved puppets. My grandfather loved puppets. So I don't know. It's, we're weird that way. And Snoop Dogg loves puppets. Yes. I mean, Snoop loves it. Double O King, whatever. We have puppets at uh, Bootsie Bellows, the nightclub I own. And uh, I just love it. It sort of loosens people up. They like taking pictures with it. It's just a sort of fun thing. Some people think it's weird. I read into someone who was really scared of them. It's uh, that's always something. If you had to, God forbid, emergency, you got one that you could grab out of the club. Which one are you grabbing? It was probably the first one we had. It's Keith Richards because he has a drink in his hand, and I love just going up to like. Having a puppet go up to and act like he's drunk is just the funniest yeah, thing. Like Have him pass out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I also recently purchased the rights to Bozo the Clown. No. Yes. <laughs> Billionaire to make right no, here. No, no, really? no, it's more for philanthropy. I just love love Bozo as a kid. But people are also scared of clowns. So I want to sort of help. Through it, I know, know, and it, yeah. So I want to sort of help change the tide there's so many wonderful clowns out there i really want them to get some notoriety i don't want kids to grow up that's afraid of clowns it didn't Mexico, help either. yeah no not at all i understand there's an insane movie that's coming out tell me about that one there's a great new young cast and and tyler and matt are wonderful directors so it's i saw it it's really scary and it's really funny they aren't calling it scream 5 oh, it's no, scream 2022 yeah well, it's just scream. How hard is it to have it be scary yet still be funny when you're a cast member? 
Yeah. Well, Matt, Matt and Tyler, the directors, were really, they loved Wes Craven films. They were inspired by him. So they had a really good sense of it. They did a film called Ready or Not, which is also really funny and scary. So they were the perfect directors. All right. Bring good clowns back. Save the clowns. Save the clowns. Save the clowns. Save the clowns. <laughs> Thank you.